This is Austin Duma, Application Specialist at CAD Microsolutions, and today's tech tip is the second of a two-part series on using custom properties to manage SOLIDWORKS title block information. In my previous tech tip, I talked about linking custom properties to a drawing's title block to make data entry more efficient. I will now take this one step further and show you how the title block data and custom properties in general can be managed in PDM. To link custom properties to a PDM vault, we first must go into the PDM administration program and log into the vault housing our SOLIDWORKS files, which I have already done. Once there, we must adjust settings in two areas, variables and data cards. Let's start with variables. To open up the variables interface, I simply right mouse click on the variables node and select open. From here, I can review, add, and adjust all variables being managed inside the vault. In my previous video, we were working with a drawing custom property called Approved By and a part property called Description. We will continue with those examples starting with Approved By. To create a variable, simply click New Variable, enter the name of the new variable, and then select the variable type for that variable. For our examples, we will use text. Once the variable has been created, we need to create a link between the newly created PDM variable and the SOLIDWORKS custom property. To do this, I click on New Attribute, select the custom property from the block name pulldown, enter the exact name of the custom property that we are linking to, in this case approved by without a space, and it is case sensitive, so be careful. And finally, add the applicable file extensions where the custom property resides. In our example, approved by is only being used on drawing files, so I only have to type in SLD DRW. This completes the approved by variable. Now we repeat the process for the description variable. Again, I create the new variable and I link it to a custom property. For this variable, we have a couple of adjustments. Since description can appear in more than just drawing files, I'm going to add the part and assembly file types to the file extension list. So I type the three file extensions, separating them with a comma. The other addition we have to make is to include an extra attribute. The description property is being managed in the part file, but it's also appearing in the title block of the associated drawing via the dollar sign PRP sheet link discussed in the part one video. To facilitate this link in PDM, we are going to create a second attribute and link it to the description property. This time, the block name we select is going to be the dollar sign PRP sheet. We link it to the custom property and then we only add SLD DRW to the file extension list. Once complete, click OK to add, exit out of the variables window. With the variables complete, the next task is to adjust the data card to be able to manage the control and flow of data between PDM and SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to expand the file cards folder in the cards node of administration and select the SOLIDWORKS data card. This will open up the data card window. In my example, I already have text box controls for approved by and description and have been linked to the variables that we created earlier. There are two specific settings in the control properties that will help us control the flow of data between PDM and SOLIDWORKS. These are the read only and default overwrites checkboxes. To make the flow of data bidirectional, in other words, editable from both PDM and SOLIDWORKS, you leave both checkboxes unchecked. To make the flow of data one way from SOLIDWORKS to PDM, check only the read-only checkbox. To make the flow of data one way from PDM to SOLIDWORKS, check only the default overwrites checkbox. Although this does not technically make the custom property read-only in SOLIDWORKS, it has the same effect. If someone edits the property in SOLIDWORKS and then checks the file in, PDM will simply overwrite the changes made in the custom property with what is already stored in PDM. This means the only way to edit data is via the data card control. Finally, another option is to make the custom properties system controlled so that users cannot edit the data from either location. As an example of this, if you want to use a PDM workflow to automatically update the data via a set variable action, as the file is transitioned from one state to another. To do this, you would check both boxes. For the purposes of our exercise, we shall make the description control bidirectional, in other words, no checkboxes checked, and approved by editable only from the data card. 
In other words, default overwrites checked. Since we're editing the data card, I'm also going to choose to make the material control editable only from the SOLIDWORKS file. In other words, read only is checked. This is a good example of how you only want data edited from the file because you want the user to use the functionality of SOLIDWORKS, in this case, the materials database. Once all the changes are made, I click Save and I close the data card editor window. Now let's see how the flow of data works. Here I have a part file and associated drawing already checked out and I will edit approved by in sheet one of the drawing file and description on the part file. Note how if I try to edit the material on the data card, I can't, which confirms the settings I made in the data card editor. Now if I open up the part file and go into properties, you can see how the data entered on the data card is now visible inside the SOLIDWORKS file. I'm also going to change the material to show how the data is pushed back into PDM. And I'm going to save the file. As I open up the drawing file, you'll be able to see that the description has been applied to the title block as well as approved by. And as you should with every SOLIDWORKS drawing, I'm going to rebuild it and save it because the reference file has changed. As a final test, I'm going to go into the drawings properties and adjust the approved by property. Note how a description field has been added to the drawing. This is facilitated by the dollar sign PRP sheet attribute added to the description variable in PDM. Finally, I'm going to save the drawing, check file, both files back in, and close SOLIDWORKS. Note how the material field has changed in the part file and approved by on sheet one of the drawing file has reverted back to the original data that was in PDM. With these tests, we know our adjustments to the vault are correct. I hope this has been an informative tech tip on how to manage data between SOLIDWORKS and PDM. Have a great designing day.